Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Waltham Land Trust Green Space Blues Jam in Place. I'm Nadine Stein, the president of the Land Trust Board, and I'm here with Tyrone. We're here on the south side watching and waiting to hear this great show tonight that uh, Annie Rains and Paul Rochelle are going to put on. This is the first time that we've done the Blues Jam remotely, and we've had this awesome team of people working together to make it happen for you. And we're really excited about live music and dancing. We have a silent auction that has some awesome prizes for you to bid on. And we really think that uh, we're gonna have a great time tonight. We appreciate you coming in remotely with us. Um, because of the pandemic, we had to make some changes, but we think it's gonna be awesome anyway. Uh, we're really excited to have Annie and Paul here. And now we're gonna have each of the land trust directors uh, welcome you. Go ahead. Hi, this is Diana Young, um, and I'd like to welcome you too to the uh, virtual Green Space Blues Jam. And uh, I wish we could all be together, but uh, maybe next year. But in the meantime, I'd like to remind you about one thing that you can do as a part of what the Land Trust has delivered to Waltham. We have all these beautiful trails. We have maps. We've got stewards who've been keeping the trails in tremendous uh, shape. And it's one of the safest things you can do is be outside uh, socially distancing as long as you also socially distance from the ticks. So anyway, have a great time uh, the, tonight and enjoy our musical presentation and the uh, virtual uh, audit, I mean, uh, auction. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to the uh, this year's Blues Jam. I'm John Diekman, the Belmont member of the uh, board of the board. Um, I am on the uh, land committee and I've been involved in trail work over the past 10 years or so. I'm really looking forward to uh, Annie and Paul's performance tonight. I hope you all enjoy and don't forget the silent auction. Hi, this is Marie Daly. I'm one of the founders of the Land Trust, and I'm standing here on Macro Hill, one of my favorite places. And yeah, I'm looking over this field of bees and wildflowers and butterflies, uh, looking over the blue hills in the distance. And this is one of my favorite places to come and uh, visit, and it's good for taking children here, uh, for bicycling, for walking your dogs. Uh, Etc. Hello everyone, my name is Brian McCormick. I'm a board member with the Wathling Land Trust. As you can see, I'm enjoying Prospect Hill Park tonight, and I wanted to thank you for all of your support during this time. It's been truly inspirational. Thanks. Hi everybody, I'm Martha Creedon from the Board of Directors at the Waltham Land Trust. I want to give a shout out to the incredible group of volunteer stewards who are out on our trails, along the river, and out in our parks every day. As the trained eyes and ears of our open space, every day they are out removing trash and pulling invasives such as these. Their work truly keeps Waltham's open space more enjoyable for everyone. Hey, I also want to give a shout out to all of you who are out there tonight, attending tonight's Blues Jam in Place. We really need and appreciate your support. Have a great time. Hi everybody, Anna Richardson here with my husband Clarence. We're coming to you from the Grove Street Green Space one of the many properties in Waltham, the Land Trust has worked really hard to protect. Thank you so much for your support and enjoy the evening. Hi, I'm Dan Melnichuk, a director of the Waltham Land Trust. I'm standing by the shore of Hardy Pond. Hardy Pond and its surrounding woodlands and wetlands uh, is one of the most awesome open space areas in Waltham. It's a wildlife preserve that you can see uh, herons and hawks, eagles and egrets, muskrats and mink, turtles, frogs, well, the list goes on and on. I'm so glad you came tonight. Uh, thanks for coming and I hope you have a great time. Hi, I'm Barbara Jacobs, the newest member of the Waltham Land Trust Board of Directors. Here walking out of the Mokima Conservation Area for Waltham. 
Enjoy your night. Hi, this is Maureen Fowler, the Waltham Land Trust Vice President. Thank you for joining us tonight at the 2020 Green Space Blues Jam in place. I hope you're enjoying the show and I hope you continue to visit the silent auction. Thank you for joining us and hope to see you soon. Okay. Hi, I'm Sonia Wadman, the executive director and only staff person for the Waltham Land Trust. I am here with my life partner, John Norton, Art. and my sister Erica. Good evening. And we are here watching from our Auburndale Newton patio. So the schedule for this evening will be as follows. At 7.15, We'll have the first one hour set of live blues and Americana performed by Annie Rains and Paul Rochelle. At 8.15, we'll have a 30 minute intermission so the musicians can take a break. Stay tuned during this intermission to see how the online auction is going. That's right, there's an auction happening right now at onlineauction.waltfamlandtrust.org. We have an auction button right here in the event window you can click on at any time that'll take you right to the auction. Check it out throughout the night and tomorrow. Bidding closes at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. During the intermission, we'll also hear from Land Trust Director and co-founder Mark Rudnick as he reflects on the one-year anniversary of the tragic passing of Director David Case. The intermission will also feature scenes of Waltham Wildlife and is an excellent time to eat the food you hopefully pre-ordered and picked up from Not Your Average Joe's, which we did. We, did. we got our food. <laughs> But you can go and get it during the intermission if you need to. At 8.45, Annie and Paul will return to play another one-hour set. The music ends at 9.45, when we'll get another auction update and thank everyone for supporting our mission of creating a, land, a legacy of land conservation. Speaking of thanking folks, we need to take a few minutes right now to recognize and thank the many businesses and individuals who have sponsored this event. The Estate of David Case. Elizabeth Carter and the Metro West Stress Reduction and Resilience. The Nelson Companies, Marie Daly, John and Betsy Diekman, Anna and Clarence Richardson, First Parish of Waltham, Bentley University, the Jack and Eleanor Marcoux Charitable Foundation, the Rotary Club of Waltham, Mark Rudnick, Quick Book, Quick Book Guru, Watertown Savings Bank, Diana Young, Amy Rothstein, and Dion's. We want to remind folks, we also have a virtual dance and watch party happening through the Bentley Zoom link that was included in the email you got 10 minutes before the show started. You can get to that dance party by going to zoomdanceparty.wellfamlandtrust.org. You need to put in a password though, and that password is W-L-T-G-S-B-J. WLT member Dan Berlin is hosting the dance party, which will have a main room for everyone to congregate, but you can also request to be put in a breakout room with your friends. Just chat Dan Berlin on the chat wall and tell him who should be put into your breakout room or if you want to switch rooms. Folks can also post general comments on the chat wall, and it's kind of fun to, to do that and read those. All right, so now on to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Okay, so um, Annie and Paul Rains will be taking the stage shortly. For 25 years, Annie and Paul have been hailed as one of the world's best blues duos. They have recorded six albums together and have received numerous award nominations from the Blues Foundation. They have performed and recorded with John Sebastian and Susan Tedeschi opened for Ray Charles, Dr. John, and Little Feet, and performed on international radio and TV shows, including Late Night with Conan O'Brien and your Prairie Home Companion. Wow. So these guys have been playing for a while all around, and I know that they regularly gigged at Great Scott um, and other places around town. And, uh, and so I know one of our trust stewards, Linda Gretz, who also supplied two sets of cards of beautiful photos of butterflies and um, flowers. 
Anyway, Linda took harmonica lessons from Annie Rains at one point. So, um, so these guys are really great, Annie and Paul, and we're so very, very happy that they're joining us tonight and able to come to our supporters live stream through this wonderful event. So I would like to now be able to bring you Annie and Paul, but they're taking a little bit of time. So this will give me an opportunity to let you know that there is a generous sponsor who is matching all donations that are straight donations, not item purchases made through the auction website, as well as the donate button that's on this event page. So all straight donations made through these um, buttons will be doubled by this anonymous uh, sponsor who's a very generous person. Can watch a clock or anything here, you can tell We time. very much appreciate her support and the support of all of our sponsors. Yeah, we're ready. Oh, yeah. Very excited. <clears throat> and now, without much further ado, I bring to you Annie Rains and Paul Rochelle, live from Newton. <laughs> Yay, here we are in Newton. Hey, we're in Newton. We're also in Newton. That's yes. right, we are. Exactly. Well, it's nice to see everybody here. <laughs> and uh, we're looking forward to playing for you. We're going to start out with an old tune, a country blues tune by a guy named Scrapper Blackwell. It was from Indianapolis, Indiana. And he recorded a bunch of records with a guy named Leroy Carr in the 20s, and they had a hit record with a song called The How Long Blues. But uh, Blackwell recorded some stuff by himself, and we're going to do one of those tunes that he recorded. It's called The Trouble Blues. <clears throat> and um, trouble is the name of the game today, these days, uh, with what's going on with the coronavirus. And so we're all dealing with uh, various kinds of troubles. <clears throat> so here's one called The Trouble Blues. <clears throat> starts it stops at my back door i've had more trouble never in my life before i wonder why trouble keeps on worrying me i just soon have my body baby buried in the sea Trouble in the morning, trouble at night Seem like I'm treated every way but right I wonder why trouble keeps on worrying me I just soon have my body, baby, buried in the sea Thank you. 
trouble starts, it lasts for so long. Looks like everything happened, everything goes wrong. I wonder why trouble keeps on worrying me. I just soon have my body, baby, buried in the sea. I just soon have my body, baby, buried in the sea. Trouble Blues, Scrapper Blackwell. That was a tune recorded in 1928. Um, and Blackwell died in 1962, I think it was. He died during the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> I remember that. It was a 11 or 12 or something like six. I forgot how old it was. But anyway, um, this next song is about, uh, about uh, Prohibition. Prohibition, the 18th Amendment to the Constitution, uh, 1920. Uh, to forbid the sale and the making of alcohol in the United States. And uh, that's a strange, that was a strange one. I don't know where that came from, but um, the whole idea that, uh, that you couldn't make or buy alcohol was an extreme, uh, extreme change for lots of people, especially uh, people who lived out in the country, which I think 60% of the population in the 1920, 1920s uh, were, were farmers, and most people in the 1920s were still living in rural areas. And uh, so they didn't have a, a chance to go and buy, uh, you know, a quart of gin or something like that. Usually they made their own home brew uh, stuff and, uh, and drank that. Um, but uh, so um, there was this guy named Tommy Johnson, who was a musician down in Mi Mississippi. And um, he wrote a song called A Canned Heat Blues. And it's a story about him drinking Sterno. Sterno is uh, people who go camping, they might know what it is. It comes in a comes in a little can like a like a like a um, a can they used to put shoe polish in. I know when I was a kid, I had these metal cans and the shoe polish was in there. But they sell Sterno just like that in, in a can, and and uh, you take the top off and it's got cardboard in there with this with this alcohol, and you can light it on fire and you can cook things on it, or <laughs> you can drink it. You can pour it through bread and uh, pour it into some lemonade, and apparently you can drink it. Um, I've never tried it, tried it, but I can guarantee you that Tommy Johnson wrote enough of it, drank enough of it, so he could write a song about it. But it's also known that he drank, uh, was fond of antifreeze and hair tonic. Uh, drinking that was also something he could do when he couldn't make or buy uh, liquor. So that uh, had a lot of uh, weird aspects to it, uh, prohibition. And this is just one uh, one man's story, but uh, The Can't Heat Blues by Tommy Johnson, one of my favorite songs. Somebody take his candy. 
So we're going to try uh, an original here. This is one that I wrote a long time ago. And it's an open tuning. And uh, it's called Louise. And um, see if I can do this in the right key. Um, my tuner. Here's one. Here's one. Thank you. Where'd you get that from? It's mine. Oh, where's mine? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's probably on the it's bed. Right, it's somewhere. Oh, it's over. No, it's over on the international. Right? It's a brave new world, everybody. So this is Paul's and my first broadcast from home. You can hear a dog barking occasionally in the background. Uh, every now and then there's a package delivery and the dog starts barking. So this is uh, part of the, again, the new old time broadcast after years of perfecting our well not perfecting but after years of working on our stagecraft and all the little elements that go into putting on a show in a coffee house in a school auditorium in a theater in a bar now we're we've got the living room all wired up we've got the lights on hot lights it's very hot which is good because it reminds us of playing on a front porch on a day like today. It was a little noisy on the porch, so we're inside. Hang on, don't go down. Let me go down. And then we're just doing what we usually do on stage, which is uh, change keys and tune a lot. And uh, I look for the right harp to go with the key that Paul's playing in. All right, we're going to try this one in uh, in A, A flat. Joe G sharp. I don't know. All right, this one I wrote a long time ago. It's called Louise. I 
guitar in tune and then always we a good thing to do it's always a good thing to try to do um, little, little cameos from from Lula there it's Lula Barbie we're gonna do a song by the great Bessie Smith who was known as the Empress of the Blues why was she known as the Empress of the Blues you ask I'm just guessing that you're asking here. Uh, well, she was simply the greatest, and you should know that. Um, but there wasn't always Bessie Smith. But there were women who sang blues, and at first, there were only women singing blues. There weren't any men singing blues. It was known as women's music, um, probably because the men had given the women the blues in the first place, and so the women were singing about it. Pause for delayed laughter and coming back. Okay. There's usually <laughs> waves of laughter. It's oh, yeah, rippling ripples, through the audience at this peels, point. Yeah. Okay. Some people are up and walking around. Some are yeah, no. getting popcorn. <laughs> Some are throwing popcorn at us. So the first blues recording was made by a singer named Mamie Smith, African American. 
I'm not used to talking without people in front of me, so I'm stuttering a little more than usual. African-American singer named Mamie Smith uh, and the song Crazy Blues, which was written by an African-American songwriter named Perry Bradford, who is also an entrepreneur and record label uh, A&R scout and a, a businessman with promoter and so on, music business guy. Uh, and he brought Mamie Smith, a young singer with an amazing range, into uh, which studios, Paul? Into uh, OK Chicago, Records? Chicago, is he? Into Chicago. And recorded this song called The Crazy Blues. Uh, we're not going to do that one, but it's an amazing song you can look up on YouTube after the show or even during the show. And uh, it sold so many copies. I think it's sort of a myth. Sold that a million sold, copies in three months. We, that's what they say. It sold a lot. And uh, it was the first time an African-American singer had been singing black music uh, on record. So there had been really a dearth of that. There were singers like Sophie Tucker uh, in the business doing traditional uh, African-American song styles by African-American songwriters like Shelton Brooks and by uh, Tyus and Charles and Effie Tyus, but they weren't doing the, uh, the real stuff, uh, as in a black singer singing black music and really delivering the news that way. So it was a revelation to people, uh, to record buyers everywhere, and uh, it sparked this uh, amazing spree of blues recording. All of a sudden, blues was a viable commercial form uh, where it hadn't been before. And recording was still very young. This is 1920. So the record company scouts started scouting and finding blues singers usually women who sang in uh, minstrel show circuit or tent show circuit, as it was being called at that point. And they started uh, recording singers like Lucille Hedgeman, Ethel Waters, Ida Cox, Alberta Hunter. And they called these records race records, for lack of a, a better name, um, which really, there were better names around. They just hadn't thought of them yet. <clears throat> and uh, this was the way that they marketed blues, and people knew they were buying a record by a black artist. It was a race record. Um, but this was a total change in the economics of the record business because there just hadn't been any anybody on the receiving end of color up to that point. So, um, so all these incredible singers were getting recorded and distributed nationally, and one young singer named Bessie Smith came along, and she just outsang the rest of them. Um, flat out, just flat sang out. About, I sang around the, right under the table. She was uh, quite a personality too. She was very, very tough, uh, sort of violent actually person who uh, didn't take any stuff from anybody, and uh, she was known to like you know, physically attack people and stuff. She was a tough uh, person to deal with, but she had a trick that she used to do. Um, she once when she'd be playing these big uh, shows in theaters, not tents in, in, a, in, a, in a cornfield, but she'd be playing, you know, in theaters. And uh, she had a little trick. It was called walking one. And she would pick out a guy in the audience. And, uh, and then she'd sing to him in particular. And at some point, uh, she'd put the spell on him, I guess. And she'd sing something maybe particularly uh, suggestive or something. Anyway, walking one was he'd stand up and walk to the stage as if in a trance, you know. And she could do this whenever she wanted to, to apparently just about anybody in the audience um it was a trick that she learned somewhere and uh it was a pretty amazing thing she could she could call out the person she was gonna she tell you the band that guy in the 10th row there in the third seat i'm gonna make him walk and she she would do it she'd get these people to walk up to the stage and sort of look at her while she sang to them so um with that in mind andy's gonna sing this song and we'll see what happens if people start wandering over to the house or something then we'll see Okay. All right. This I'll is... give him, uh, Dan Melnichuk's address. If you can walk to Dan's house. That's right. Go to Dan's if you want to uh, find some truth. Ready? Yep. Look at here, Daddy. I want to tell you. Please get out of my sight. I'm
handles that operate. You can't make that work with pain. When you hurt your pride, you like to roll around. You've been a Thank you, thank you all. All right, let's see. We're a little out of tune here. <coughs> uh, let me try Michigan Border. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see what key am I in? We're on standard tuning. Right now you're in. The, yeah, you're in the standard uh, zone. Let's see. Um, that's a good idea to do. So the thing we need to improve <coughs> about this technology is we would love to see everybody who's here tonight because. Uh, it's one of the things that makes us feel really good is knowing that we're connecting with people. And I don't know if there's a way of doing this from the Green Space Blues Jam in place, waves or comments or <clears throat> or questions or anything like that. But if you if you feel like participating and chiming in, um, I hope that there's a way that you can do that and that we can maybe check in and see that on the break and respond a little bit. I think after uh, either on the break or after we play our second set, I think there's time for a little gathering and Q&A. So if you stick around, stay tuned. Grab another lemonade or another uh, tequila sunrise. <laughs> We're going to do a song that we haven't done uh, together before. It's a tune that I learned uh, from a record by a guy named Frank Stokes. Frank Stokes was a, a blacksmith by trade, but he uh, he uh, made up these great songs, and uh, they're kind of uh, humorous uh, songs, and uh, I guess you, call it, you could almost call them minstrel kind of songs because... Um, a lot of um, minstrel songs have sort of characters in them, uh, characters who, who um, don't make a lot of sense um, in the in the real world, but in their own world they make they make more sense. Um, and uh, Frank Stokes wrote one of my favorite blues lines in one of his songs, and, and the line is, "I ain't bow legged, but I walk that way," <laughs> and that's that's a real good way of describing uh, anybody who's uh, who's living their own life, I guess, and doing what they want to do. 
So what we're going to do is a D. Um, we've got a tuner here, and the tuner says, hang on, the tuner says, F sharp, C, I'm flat. Oh, geez, good ears. Is that good? Yep. All right, it's called Ain't Nobody's Business But My Own. Talk so rough to me all the time. Ain't nobody's business but mine. If I had my way, I'd be with you and do all the things that you want me to do. Ain't nobody's business but my own. It ain't nobody's business, honey, where in the world to get my money. Ain't nobody's business but mine. It ain't nobody's business, kid. Where the world to keep money in Ain't nobody's business but my own Careful, I stay at home. I've been troubled about you since you've been gone. Ain't nobody's business but my own. It ain't nobody's business, honey. Where in the world I get my money? Ain't nobody's business but mine. It ain't nobody's business, kid. Where in the world I get money? Ain't nobody's business but my own. end there on <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, that was nice, Paul. Thank you, Annie. It's the first time we've ever done that song. So um, that was fun. Yeah. Nice, nice tune. Hey, you never know. You never know. That's right. I, I was just thinking of it. Old Man Moe's, but... I always do Old Man Moe's. I love that one. I mean, shake the cobwebs out of my chromatic. The one with the button on it. Also, Honor Harmonica sent me this fancy new chromatic in a case. I kind of like the box it came in just as much as I like the harmonica. It's neoprene. It's neoprene? Mm -hmm. I still got to kick start it. <laughs> it's 
So this next song was written by a great blues player, Louis Armstrong, who was his original 1926, uh, 29 recordings, 6 to 29, are amazing. Uh, they're incredibly good. I remember when I was a kid, uh, uh, the Ed Sullivan show every Sunday um, was on every Sunday, but every once in a while, Louis Armstrong would be on. And, you know, he was always introduced as the world's greatest trumpet player. And I was, you know, probably eight or nine or ten or so when I first saw him on TV. And, uh, you know, he came out and he he had his trumpet and he had a big handkerchief and he sang, you know, Blueberry Hill or something. And then he would play like, you know, a couple of notes on the trumpet and then he'd be gone. And I thought, world's the greatest trumpet player, you know. He was, at that point, I didn't realize he'd already, um, you know, made his best recordings and he was uh, sort of in semi-retirement and he mostly was an entertainer at that point. He wasn't really the far-reaching jazz musician he had been in the 20s. But if you listen to those 1926 through 29, also referred to as the Hot Five and the Hot Seven recordings, um, it was phenomenal. You wouldn't believe it's the same person uh, that, uh, you know, the old guy we saw on TV when we were kids. Really was an incredibly far-reaching uh, musician. And what he contributed to jazz itself very specifically was... Um, playing chorus after chorus, each one in more inventive than the next. Um, usually a guy would take three or four choruses and that would be it. But Lewis was just fecund, you know, he could just keep improvising, improvising and making spaces and, uh, and just thrilling people with his improvisational skills. So this is a tune that he also uh, wrote, like a novelty song, and it's called Old Man Moves. And we're gonna do this one for Dan. Now, um, Annie and I, just to give you a little background on this one, uh, we did this uh, song, I think one of the first times we ever did it was in Germany. We were playing in a little town in Germany called Lahr. And um, the uh, German people, um, when they hear a song that they like, they're very, very enthusiastic. And so they would sing this um, with us when we asked them to. And uh, we're going to ask you to do the same thing. Of course, we won't be able to hear you. And you might embarrass yourself uh, doing it uh, in your backyard. People wonder why you're singing, oh, yeah, or we believe. But uh, that's what you would be singing if you were sitting in front of us now, or we would try to get you to sing that. So we're going to go through the song, and uh, you'll probably be able to figure out where you would be singing. We're not going to tell you. Here we go, Old Man Mose. I believe, oh yeah, I believe, oh yeah, that old man was dead. When I went up to the rooftop, looked through the crack, saw an old man, he was lying on his back. The old man Mose was dead asleep, folks, I do not know. After looking through that window, man, I ain't gonna do it no more. We believe, oh yeah, we believe. We believe oh, yeah. that old man was dead. Yes, so we believe. Oh, yeah. We believe. Oh, yeah. We believe. Oh, yeah. That old man was dead. Yeah. We believe most kick bucket. 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 Most kick bucket. Most get the bucket, we believe it.
Well, I went up to the rooftop. I looked through the crack. Saw an old man, he was lying on his back. The old man Mose was dead asleep, folks. I, I do not know. After looking through that window, man, I ain't gonna do it no more. We believe, and we believe, we believe. That old man Mose is dead. Yes, so we found out. Oh, yeah. What it's all about. Oh, yeah. Well, we found out. Oh, yeah. That old man Mose is dead. Yeah, we found out. We found out. We found out. That old man Mose is dead. We believe. We believe. We believe. Right, you sounded great. That's uh, that's what we told the Germans. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is a tune that Annie wrote, and uh, it's actually six and a half minutes long, and it's called <laughs> "Got to Fly."
chorus has a sing-along, and you can all sing. Sing from home. If you're new, we might hear you. Got to fly. Got to fly. Got to fly. We'll be right back. Turn off the lights, right? All right, gotta fly. All right, we'll be right back. Testing, can you hear me? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. This is awesome. I was just back here singing to that last song. <laughs> that was very cool. I am, um, let me shut this thing off over here. All right, out of <laughs> I have all these all right. devices going at the right same back. time. Testing, can you hear me? Hi, everybody. Okay, all right. Just wanna go over for this a little bit. Okay, so that was a great first set. I hope you guys had a great time dancing and singing along. I saw a lot of people over in the dance party having a great chat. Um, it's, it's awesome, and they'll be back in 30 minutes. That gives you enough time to hightail it over within the speed limit to uh, Not Your Average Joe's and pick up some food because they're going to donate 15% of uh, what they earned tonight to the Land Trust, and they're doing that all summer long. So if you didn't get there today, there's plenty of other days for you to get there all the way to August 31st. Um, it's a great time also, if you've already eaten, to check out the auction. And there is a button on the bottom of the screen for you to check it out, onlineauction.walthiamlandtrust.org. And it will take you right to the website if you touch that button. And you can bid on items until tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And a little bit later on in the intermission, Land Trust Vice President Maureen Fowler is going to take you right through that website and highlight some of the items that are getting a lot of attention and things that have some low bids so you can get in on them. But first, we're going to hear from one of the Land Trust founding directors, Mark Rudnick, who will share his thoughts on the one-year anniversary of the death of David Case, a Land Trust director who tragically lost his life while water, whitewater rafting in Utah last summer. Thank you, Mark. Hello, my name is Mark Rudnick, and I am one of the founders of the Waltham Land Trust. I'd like to take a moment today to remember our longtime co-conspirator, David Case, one of the great open space heroes of this community. I'd like to tell you a story about how Dave and I met, but the truth is I can't rightly say how, a common feeling among those who came to know Dave. A few years ago, uh, after the Waltham Land Trust was founded in 1999, I began to realize that wherever I went to inventory open space in the city or test out new trails, there was a certain guy in the background quietly watching, measuring, and calculating. Somehow Dave was always there when we discovered a new place, examined some environmental damage, or traced some long abandoned trail in the woods. We drafted him onto the board in 2003, and he was always the first to volunteer to lead a walk to make a speech, or to testify at a local board. David built trails, stuffed envelopes, hosted annual meetings. He organized the quarterly journal, served as our clerk. He drew all of our maps, worked with the stewards, met with the mayor. Just about anything that the land trust was involved in, it also involved David Case. Dave's greatest victory was the removal of an illegal communications tower from Prospect Hill and the abutting residential neighborhood. It's difficult to think of the tower parcel now being considered for city acquisition without remembering the diligence, fearlessness, and good work of Dave Case. On a board of directors with diverse interests, Dave and I were the adventure travelers. Back last June, 
We wished each other happy trails. He was returning to his favorite haunts, the Whitewater Canyons of the Colorado, and I was heading back to Africa for some birding and safaris. It was in July in South Africa that I heard the stinging news of David's demise on the river. Words still hard to form to this day. Dave was, in my view, a remarkable Renaissance man, accomplished in a wide variety of arts and sciences, humble and kind, full of good humor and endless energy, giving of himself in huge portions to help the hungry, the environment, and our community, and setting a righteous example of how to play your part in the world. The Waltham Land Trust will continue to miss and to remember David in a movement made so much better by his having been a part. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the show. You'll cue me when it's time. You'll cue me when it's time.
can you put a list of the spots?
everybody. I hope you're enjoying this awesome time with Annie Rains. I'm having a great time. We're having dancing out at the Zoom dance party. But I want to talk about the online auction that's happening right now. So if you give me a minute, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to talk about the silent auction. So as you can see, this is our silent auction. I'm going to walk through a couple of items here. As you can see, this green button right here says donate, and a very generous donor has, has offered to match some of our donations, so please click this button anytime you want. I am already logged in, so my screen looks like this, but I want to walk you through some items that don't have any bids and how you can support the Waltham Land Trust. So I'm going to move down here a little bit. We have these great prizes, and there's still some left. There are six bottles of white wine and four bottles of red wine still available. If you buy now, you get a bottle of wine that or wine that's donated by Dion's um, shop in Waltham. And we also have different $25 gift cards that are in these gift bags. And we'd love for you to buy one of them. We also have these surprise raffle items. You can buy as many as you want. We have 937 left. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity for you. And for $5, you're given a chance to enter a raffle and we have a lot of different um, land trust swag in the raffles and we're doing a um, independent raffle. We're gonna figure out who's gonna win them and by tomorrow night, the raffle ends tomorrow night at 6 p.m. So we'll be pulling the, the winning prizes of these online raffles tomorrow. But I wanna walk you through some other awesome items that we have here. We have this great photo of an eagle. I just saw, I was looking at the auction multiple times over the last few days, and I just see this is iconic images of Prospect Hill Park. It has no bids on it. This looks pretty awesome. I think someone should bid on this. I see Sonia waving at me in the background. She's distracting me. <laughs> but I want you to go through all these different items. So I want to go back up to the top and look at all items. But I want to say you can filter it by different categories. And we have some items that have no bids. So if anyone is generously wanting to share, uh, we can look at all the items that have no bids so far. We have these wonderful paintings and some treatment centers and portrait sessions. We have all these great items that have had no bids taken on them yet. So please, please, please consider bidding on some of these items. Look at this pair of foot joint women's shoes. If I was a size eight, I'd be bidding on that, but that's not my size. But I wanna go through other items. Not, we Please bid as much and as often as you would like. There's 92 items to bid on. We have this great Celebrating Mr. Waltham um, basket. It is celebrating Mr. Nocera who recently passed away. We have yoga classes. We have consultation. Look at this big bread. I happen to have made that, so I have to say, please bid on that. Um, I discovered yeast breaking during the pandemic, as a lot of people did, and I think my bread came out pretty awesome. Just gonna put a plug in there for that. Um, we have beaded bracelets. We have gift cards. Different, different markets gave us gift cards. Um, they're more than $25. Lots of other of our friends baked items and gave gift cards. So please consider purchasing any of these or bidding on them. The online auction is a wonderful tool. They'll tell you if someone outbids you, they give you a chance to bid again. So please bid often and frequently, and we're happy to have you. Um, again, the it says two pages. You go all the way to the bottom. Cool earrings, cool jam from one of our board members. Kitchen mixers, who knew? There's all the cool things you can get here. Um, different makeup bags, knit scarves, more cookies, more baked goods, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, health clubs, lots of different items that you can purchase. So please consider purchasing or bidding on any of these. You can also bid directly, as I said at the very top. Um, the items at the top, I'll show you what I have bid on. These are my thrive because you could if you uh, if you if you register you can bid on your own things. I've been outbid more than once on some of these items, my friends. So please bid often. I did get the bottle of wine though; that's already mine. Um, but please use the donate button whenever you can, um, and please bid often and frequently. See you soon. Keep enjoying the show. I want. I'm gonna need something to drink. Oh, I got some water. Here, here's a bottle.
You have to tap that bar. Hi. Wow, well, that was fun looking at the auction and seeing all those great items. Good stuff. Don't forget, you can bid up until 6 p.m. tomorrow night. And please do. So I want to take this opportunity to remind folks of that very generous donor who has pledged to match all straight donations, not items, item purchases, but just straight money up to 2,500 made through the green donate button on the auction website in the upper right side of the window, as well as through the green donate button on this screen. If you somehow don't find anything you like on the auction, which I don't understand how that could be, just donate. And if you don't want to buy a $5 raffle ticket, which again, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do that, you can still help us reach our fundraising goals by making a donation through those green donate buttons and your contribution will be doubled, providing us with so many resources and what we need to do to create a legacy of land conservation. So please do that. Donate through the green donate button up until 6 p.m. tomorrow when the auction will close. Okay, so now back to the music. We are so pleased to have Annie Rains and Paul Rochelle coming to us live from their space in Newton. And they're just amazing. And we're so excited to have them. So everyone, please put your dancing shoes back on and let's welcome Annie and Paul. All Thank right. you, Sonia. Thank you, so Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're back and uh, we had a little break and we wandered around the house and everything seems to be the same. Everything is where we left it. So that's a good sign. And uh, I had a little coconut uh, water, so that helped my throat a little bit. And we're going to start off here with a tune by Jelly Roll Morton. Jelly Roll Morton was a uh, was a strange sort of character. He's from New Orleans, and um, he was uh, one of those strange, uh, only can happen in America kind of people, where he was African American and Native American, uh, like many of the uh, performers we're playing today. People like Charlie Patton, Memphis Minnie, Scrapper, Scrapper Black Blackwell Black. himself yeah. was uh, was a Cherokee Indian and uh, part African American. So uh, there's a lot of characters like that in American musical history. Jimi Hendrix is a good example of that. And, uh, you know, it's just a, America. It's just the way it is. It's, it's people uh, just being together. And that's what makes it such a great country. At least in terms of music, anyway, and lots of other things. But for music, for sure. So this is a Jelly Roll Morton tune. Um, it's called Michigan Water Blues. And he wrote this at the end of his life. It's very simple. The original recording of it is extremely simple. And uh, when I heard it, I thought, gee, this song could use some variations. So I did an arrangement of it where I threw in some Blind Blake and material and some other things that I had picked up along the way and sort of force fit them into this arrangement of Jelly Roll Morton's Michigan Water Blues. So here we go. Baby's got a bed, it shines like a morning 
I swear it shines like a morning star My baby's got a bed Shines like a morning star Crawling in the middle, baby, ride me like a Cadillac car Let me go first Michigan Water Blues, yeah. Yeah. Shirley Warren. Very nice. <laughs> All right, we got a gospel song here. Now, I'm not a religious person, although I did uh, attend a religious school in England when I was a boy from the ages of 8 to 10. That's 1958 to 1960. And uh, Annie keeps adjusting my microphone, and I keep feeling like uh, now it's starting to move again. And it's not going to stay put. Oh, I see. Because the... Uh, I got you. Okay. So I don't, I, I have, I, as I, I said before, I, I have a, a vague free floating feeling that these are going to fall at the most propitious time. Yep. That's All right. Yep. Agree with that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Try them out now. All right. My life's, my life's in your hands, Annie, just so you know. That's all. So um, we're going to drop down to D. And, uh, this is one of my favorite um, recordings of all time. It's uh, recorded by a guy named no one's ever heard of. Uh, and uh, Washington Phillips was his name. And he recorded these songs in 1928 in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and uh, he was a street singer, a street evangelist. He didn't have a church, but he would sit on, on the stand or sit, I guess, on the street corner and play a very unusual instrument called a dulciola of which only a hundred were ever made. And it, it looks like a very, well, a, a sort of truncated piano. It's a little keyboard, um, like a kid's little piano. You know, it looks kind of like that. But it has a very ethereal, sort of like um, uh, tinkly, like little bells or a celeste maybe kind of sound. And uh, he had a very deep, uh, sort of husky voice. And his his lyrics are, are uh, well, I'll, We'll sing them for you, but uh, he was sounds sound he makes is like the most guileless person you ever heard in your life. He's very sounds very innocent and religious and beautiful. Um, really a sweet person. Uh, and all the songs he recorded, I think he recorded twenty two songs in two days. And the only one that he wrote was my favorite one. Uh, it's called "I Had a Good Mother and Father." And uh, so we'll do that for you now. Washington Phillips. Last time I tried this, I could sing it, so I've got my guitar tuned down a whole step, and then capoed up, and uh, we'll see what happens. It should uh, should work okay. You never know what happens when you when you lose your voice. 
So we're Danny's getting in tune here. There we go. All right, let me get a little juice. to have a real good mother and a father and they certainly stood the test now they are in bright glory and I know their souls are at rest they made a good example for me they taught me how to pray A good mother and father. You should definitely check out on YouTube. Uh, type in Washington Phillips. I had a good mother and father. Our denomination blues, or uh, uh, there are a bunch of old bunch of 22 songs that he recorded, and they're all great. And uh, like I say, he has the most guileless uh, singing voice. It just sounds like a like a real sweetheart. All right. So what are we gonna do? Oh, a uh, little thing on the national, maybe. Hey, the key to the highway. The key to the highway. I got the key to the highway. And what that good that going to do you? <laughs> Andy and I were on the road for 27 years. And uh, we drove, Andy drove, uh, across the country, but two, two times? At least two times. We used to sit the opposite way. It's funny. Now Paul's in the driver's seat position here on the screen. But, uh, but really... The scenario, unless we were in England, in which case this is the scenario. <laughs> we went to England, and at that time they had no uh, automatic transmission cars, so we, I learned to drive shift. Left-handed. Left-handed. The feet are the same, but they, 
the stick shift is on your left. And then I think the things go in the same direction. It's not opposite from the body. It's just, I forget. You know, I just told myself it was opposite stay and everything is backwards. And so when, when the trucks were coming this way, I was, I was accepting of that. <laughs> I remember we went to the rental car place the first time. And I said, uh, are you going to be able to uh, do this, you know, the stick shifts on the left? And I didn't know the clutch was the same. But, uh, and I remember Andy said, uh, I'm sitting in the rental car place. And he said, and I just need 15 minutes. I'll just drive around the parking lot a little bit. That'll be enough. <laughs> and it was. I figured if I hit any other cars in the parking lot, it was still insured, you know. 15 minutes, she was ready to go. And we drove to, uh, God, we drove halfway to, to Scotland or something. England is is about the size of the state of Illinois, but for some reason it feels like a lot bigger. Like it takes a long time to get places yeah. from one end of the country to the other. But I yeah. remember, I remember somewhere. Excuse me, I remember <laughs> somewhere reading that in England you can't be any more than seventy two miles from the ocean, anywhere. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty small country. It is, and they chopped down all the trees centuries ago for farms. But there, there was a saying, I think, in like the 14th century that before they had cut down the trees, a squirrel could could uh, hop from one end of England to the other without ever touching the ground. <laughs> I think they made up a lot of things like that. It had a lot of time to make up stuff. Paul and I were driving through a Sherwood Forest one time. Oh. And <laughs> Late. The only, only reason we knew it was Sherwood Forest was there was a little sign saying uh, entering Sherwood Forest and then a little roundabout in a McDonald's. <laughs> That's right, there's a McDonald's, and it's an all-night McDonald's, too, at least it was then. Yeah. It's all lit up, right in the middle of Sherwood Forest. And, uh, well, there you go. Just shows you what, what a strange world we live in. Um, so this is uh, Jump and Shout by Louise? No, it's Jump and Shout. Oh, let's do Jump and Shout, yeah. Yeah, Jump and Shout. So this is another uh, song that I wrote a long time ago. I think we have one more that I wrote and uh, one more that Annie wrote, too. We have a few more. So this is one I wrote. Uh, my first wife, Leslie, passed away in 1996. She helped me with this. She was my manager. She got Annie and I together. She was actually briefly uh, Manny, Annie's manager for a little while. And um, so this is a song I wrote, and I showed it to her. And uh, she goes, oh, I like the guitar parts, but the lyrics are horrible. She said, uh, you ought to write something about yourself in there. And so, because I had really just come up with these generic uh, blues lyrics. So, so I sat down and I wrote something that I considered, uh, you know, about myself. And uh, so she said it was okay. So it's a, that's how I recorded it. And it's called uh, I'm Gonna Jump and Shout.
forget the day blues took me by my hand. Well, I can't forget the day blues took me by my hand. You know, I was so young, I did not understand. Jump and shout, and uh, what y'all want to do now? We got some electric stuff. Uh, we got the, the Martin over there. I don't know what. Uh, you want to try? Um, a little cute how about no? Let's try. Uh, uh, then anyway, we need to get along. Oh yeah. Let me just drop down to D here. This song is by a guy named Robert Wilkins. And he recorded this under the, the name of Reverend Robert Wilkins. And I think he lived to be, oh God, 93 or something like that. He lived to be quite old. And uh, he lived, you know, the life of, a, of the itinerant blues musician in his 30s, probably late 20s and 30s. He was a little younger than guys like Sunhouse or Charlie Patton or the, old, the older blues guys. Uh, Tommy Johnson, people like that. He was a sort of second generation. But he was a smart, very smart guy. And uh, he, um, yeah, when he got older, he started um, uh, becoming religious. A lot of these old blues guys did. They had a wandering, a sort of a vagabond sort of lives. And uh, a lot of them sort of got religious and uh, and stopped stopped that kind of living and became uh, ministers and uh, had congregations and things. <clears throat> and Robert Wilkins, um, in his later years, wrote a lot of songs about his past. About He wrote a wonderful song about one of his wives that died. It's called I'll Go With Her, which is a, a beautiful song. Um, this one is uh, written about his youth and when he was on the road. And um, it's called It Ain't No Way For Me To Get Along. And uh, in the song, he goes back home and talks to his mother and and uh, sort of it's probably sort of reminiscing kind of a song. And uh, he talks about his life and tells us about what happened to him. So uh, we rearranged this and made it uh, into a duo kind of song. I put the slide on it and put it in open tuning. Uh, okay, we're going to start it pretty soon here so we get this capo on. stone 
honey, me don't rock no stone. Treated me like my poor honey, me don't rock no stone. Treated me like my poor honey, me don't rock no stone. That ain't no way for me to get along. I stood on the roadside. I cried alone, all by myself. Honey, I cried all by myself. I stood on the roadside and cried all by myself. I stood on the roadside and cried all by myself. That ain't no way for me to get along. I want some train to come along and take me away from here, honey, take me away from here. Some train come along and take me away from here. Some train come along and take me away from here. That ain't no way for me to get along. Robert Wilkins. That ain't no way for me. Yeah. That ain't no way for me to get along. You might recognize that bass riff. Uh, the Rolling Stones borrowed that for uh, a bad beggar's banquet. I forget the name of the song. Oh, Prodigal Son. That's what they called it. And so they wouldn't have to pay him. Actually, you know what happened is um, uh, someone sued the Rolling Stones on his behalf, and he won. He got some money from them, which is kind of cool. I don't think I don't think he did it, but someone like Dick Waterman um, probably did. Probably did, yeah. They called your aunt on? No. Oh. Boy, is it on? So when I met Annie, uh, all I played basically had been playing was a country blues, acoustic blues. But be before I met Annie, I was um, I had uh, blues bands, lots of blues bands that I played in, and all of them were too loud and. I really never got the chance to play any real uh, kind of blues that I liked, but I always felt like I was up there, like I could have been anybody up there, and uh, it didn't really uh, speak to me that much. It wasn't until I really met Annie that we started. Um, I started delving into it a little bit more, uh, taking it a bit more seriously, and uh, so this is what we've come up with so far. Uh, we do play with a rhythm section on, on occasion, but we haven't in, in oh quite a while. Many, many months. We have a band called Mojo Rodeo that mm -hmm. occasionally has played uh, up in Lexington at a <laughs> at a synagogue or church uh, of um, of the synagogue's choosing. And uh, we, we used to play uh, the Court of Pub in Boston. We, we actually got our start playing at Smoke and Joe's in Brighton, the late great Smoke and Joe's pub. Uh, that was a great blues club to play. Actually, yeah. the last of the, the blues clubs around Boston. Um, and we have had so much fun playing with these guys. Um, Brad Bensko, who was a student of Paul's at Berkeley, an amazing bass player and singer, um, sings like a bird. We uh, have gotten to play with him and with Kathleen Parks of Cat and Brad and of Twisted Pine and Chris Rival. And, um, various drummers. Yeah, various drummers. <laughs> exploding drummers. Drummers come and go. A la Spinal Tap. For some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because most of them aren't very good. But uh, mm. well, actually, the ones most of the ones we play, but haven't been that good. But we have some very good drummers that we play with, and um, hopefully, we'll, next time you see us with a band, we'll be with one of those drummers. So, what do you want to start with? Uh, let's see. I, let's see. How about the "I've Gotten Every Drummer in New England Mad at Me" blues? <laughs> Yeah. 
you're the one who really gave me a verse. You're the one who really gave me a bite. Didn't think I could last much longer, but that goes to show you how wrong I was. You're my all day study, baby. You're my midnight dream. You know I love you better than anyone I've ever seen. You're the one who really gave me a bite. Didn't think I could last much longer, but then told you show sure you're wrong. I won. Day study, baby. You're my midnight dream. You know I love you better than anyone I've ever seen. You're the one who really gave me a bite. Didn't think I could last much longer, but go to show you how wrong I was. That sure is different, isn't it? Okay. Is the uh, guitar loud enough? Yes or no? Just a sh not loud. Not enough? loud enough. All right. Okay. It needs we'll turn to be it up. more loud. Yes. Uh, more loud. Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, um, a lot. A lot. Okay. Um, we want, which one do you want to do? Uh, let's do a little heartbreak. Somebody muted us.
down the same old street, but you're headed to class. Dust all on your feet, but just keep on walking. Don't pay me no mind. sweaty before <laughs> they were sweating now How's how about a blues here? on a holiday nice and slow i'll put it on the electric yeah let's do blues on a holiday i'm gonna play this one acoustically but this uh this song is a, a, a has a story to it um i wrote this uh song for bonnie Raitt. i when i was uh in my early 20s and i came up to boston actually i was 20 when i came up here and uh, I started playing with a guy who was managed by a fellow named Dick Waterman, who was uh, actually introduced me to many of the old blues guys that I had been listening to as a kid, and so that I got to play a chance to play with them, which was which was very um, special and incredible for me. Uh, actually, the first guy that I ever heard on record with Sunhouse was um, was my my original inspiration. And uh, when I was 20-something years old, I, I got a chance to play with Sun uh, through the auspices of Dick Waterman, who was his manager. So he brought Sun up to, uh, up to Cambridge for, for a, a concert tour of Canada. I think it was his last tour. And Sun borrowed one of my metal guitars. And I got a chance to sit around and play with him and talk with him for a couple of days. He was kind of incoherent. He was a, a heavy-duty alcoholic, and he... He only didn't really talk very much, but he, uh, I would sort of goad him into showing me how to play his songs right by playing them incorrectly. And uh, after a while, he'd get tired of listening to me, and he'd say, no, you don't do it like that. You do it like, like this. But that's all he would say. He wouldn't actually show me. But um, it did work out. I did learn a couple of things from him. But it was really just amazing to hear some of his stories that he told me and, and, uh, and just incredible life that he led. Uh, he killed two people, was an ordained minister, uh, and he killed a killed a guy when he was young, playing in a bar. Uh, and then he killed a guy when he was living in New York State, when he was much older. He's married five times, and uh, he was just an incredible person. He just lived an amazing life. And uh, so uh, Bonnie was uh, going to Radcliffe at that point. She was also just getting out of college. And so she was hanging around, and I was hanging around with with uh, Dick, and and every once in a while, Bonnie would be there, and she was so talented, I mean, even in those days, that it was just amazing to sit across from her, and we, she'd play, you know, big road blues or, or you know, country blues, and I'd um, play with her sometimes, and just sort of hang out and listen to her sing. She was so incredibly good, and such a nice person too. So um, I had this feeling that if I wrote a song for her. <laughs> that she might sing it to me, which was really all I really wanted to do. Um, I was a little enamored of her, but, you know, that happens all the time when you're young. So, um, But this is a song that I wrote for her. I never got a chance to tell her that I wrote it for her. Um, I did record it on my first record. It was the title of my first CD, uh, Blues on a Holiday. But I never uh, told Bonnie that I wrote the song for her. I was too um, uh, nervous, I guess, around her to confide that much in her. But later on, many years later, I gave guitar lessons to a, a woman named Susan Tedeschi, who um, asked me uh, if she could record the song. And I thought that was great since I did write it for a woman. So Susan recorded it, and then later on, she told me that she told <laughs> Bonnie the story about how I wrote it for her. Still waiting to hear from Bonnie, of course, but that's, uh, you know, that's another, another part of the story. That hasn't happened yet, but um, no big deal, no big deal. Um, so this is Blues on a Holiday. I'm going to turn my guitar down. I hope that is that loud enough. It's, it's a nice mellow song. And uh, we'll do a little uh, sort of jazzy Im imitation here. So we go, Blues on a Holiday.
Every evening you will find me All around this old neighborhood Sitting in this bar Wondering where you are You know I'd be with you if I could Honey, we should be together No matter what you might say Come back and see Just what you mean to me We'll put these blues on a holiday Every time we get together Something turns out wrong Now I find peace of mind Just by sitting here all alone Honey, please come home Why won't you surrender? Consider everything I've got to say. Come back and see just what you mean to me. We'll put these blues on a holiday. Every time we get together, something turns out wrong. Now I find peace of mind just by sitting here all alone. Honey, please come on. Why won't you surrender? Consider everything I've got to say. Come back and see just what you mean to me. We'll put these blues on our heart today. Next. <laughs> oh, that's such a nice song. I love playing on that one. Well, let's see. This is a good time in the show to talk about what's coming up this summer. What is coming up this summer, Paul? Uh, let's see. Did I don't think my hair is going to be coming back very soon. I think that's pretty much gone. But um, We're raising a nice crop of uh, tomatoes. It would be nice to get a, a, a cure for the virus. I think that's that what should be happening, I think, um, pretty soon. I remember the polio epidemic in 1956, 55, 57, something like that. And, uh, and I remember that you couldn't go to the pool because people thought it was uh, mosquitoes. I think it was mosquitoes. And if you're bitten by a mosquito, you got polio. Of course, that turned out not to be true. Uh, but, um, yeah, I remember that. Jonas Salk invented the cure for it, and it didn't take that long, maybe... Not even a year, I don't think, but my sense of time when I was that old wasn't very good. <laughs> Not particularly good now either, but... but um, It just keeps going faster. Okay, yeah. Well. Hey, you want to do Hoodoo Party? Oh, uh, Hoodoo Party, yes, by Tabby Thomas. This is, um, this is a band song. This is a kind of song that you, uh, you know... 
this is your chance to dance. We usually have one song in our set that you can dance to. Could like be like two. a Cajun song, you know? Sitting on her head. I heard Mother Brown tell Sue City Sue, Slim don't move me like he used to do. Boogie children. Yeah, boogie children. When I boogie boogie children, boogie till the break of dawn. All right, do a little boogie there, Annie. Standing up. Well, and rock down the road to the break of day, then to Two, they all went away. I ran a one pin, where and when the king and the queen moved boogie again. Boogie children, yeah, boogie children, yeah, now boogie, boogie children, boogie till the break of dawn. Yeah, now boogie, boogie children. 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 When I boogie, boogie children, boogie till the break of dawn. Yeah, now boogie, boogie children, boogie till the break of dawn. Bar ending there, yeah, bar ending. Thank you. Ten more minutes to go. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see. That could be two songs or that could be one song. That could song. be two songs or one song. Let's try to make it two songs. Okay. That well, way we can be, uh, we can right. go out in a blaze of glory. Um, now, you want to do, uh, not you're the one, the other one. Oh, uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. This is a song by the great Little Walter. Who was played with uh, Muddy Waters, Jimmy Rogers, Willie Dixon? Ready? Two, three. <laughs> You know I'm crazy about 
you, baby. You know I'm crazy about you, baby. You 
you all for listening. And there are questions. Uh, but before we take questions, we just want to thank Dan Melnichuk very much for running this dog and pony show from a tech perspective. Unbelievable <laughs> job, uh, unbelievable set of things to contend with, and a lot of patience. Thank you very much, Dan. And we want to thank Mike Williams for bringing us in and, uh, and recommending us for the festival in place. So, uh, yeah. And of course, we want to thank Maureen and Sonia and I can't read the screen, and Nadine, and all of the Waltham Land Trust volunteers and staff and everybody who uh, makes us a really, uh, makes Waltham a special place, places like Hardy's Pond and other green spaces and conservation lands. So thank you guys. Uh, so I saw that there was a question and uh, feel free to ask away. How does this work? I have no idea. So there are there are a couple of questions. One question um, was about wondering what your favorite act to open for was. Oh boy, Ray Charles. Ray Charles at, at Port in Portland, Maine. We opened for him. Cool story about that was that um, yeah the the booking the booking agency that booked him into the concert. I was looking for opening acts, and you had to send your stuff to Ray's agency so we could hear it and approve the opening act and so we sent him a little cd of ourselves and uh, he approved it which was uh, amazing in itself but the uh the sad thing about it was after well, we didn't meet him or anything but uh uh he, he wasn't there when we played but i guess somebody told him something about us and he wanted us to do a, the next show he was doing we wanted us to open up for him but we had already signed a contract to go to uh, washington state to teach at a uh, teaching seminar there. So we had to, believe it or not, turn Ray Charles down because we'd signed this contract. And I'll forever be uh, mad at uh, whoever it was we worked for. But uh, that's the way it goes in show business. But yeah, the, Ray Charles would have to be the, the biggest thrill that, uh, that I've ever had musically to open up for, for sure. There was a big debate on the Zoom dance party about what color that red guitar is. What's the exact color of red that guitar it's is? It's called Fiesta Red. Okay. Thank you. Fiesta That's being awesome. one of those turns that actually nobody knows what it means. It's a party. I guess it's a party, a Fiesta festival. Yes, Fiesta Red. It's kind of a salmon-y color up close. Well, there was guesses of tomato, burnt sienna, other Bird Sienna would somebody's, be nice. Somebody's been yeah. skipping Crayolas again. It depends on the light. Usually, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's a little more salmony in person than it is on the stage. There are some people in the Zoom dance party who remember you from the Prospect Hill Earth Day concert. Do you guys remember that? Do you have any memories from that? I do. Well, I remember Mike Williams being there. <laughs> I think, um, but uh, I just remember the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and playing <laughs> and going, wow, when I was a kid, I used to drive up this this hill. I didn't drive up the hill because I was a kid. My father would drive us up for recreation of Prospect Hill. And I, I actually went to Green Acres Nursery School. I don't know if anybody in, in the assemblage uh, is a Green Acres alum. Was David Gabor there? Uh, no, it, that was... <laughs> The Green Acres Green TV Acres. show, one of my no. favorites. But we had another, we had another theme song. It wasn't da 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 da. da. It was uh, like Jolly Green Acres or something like yeah, that. Yeah, even good as that one. No, it wasn't yeah. as good. But um, but it was a cast of characters. That anyway, was a good. That was a good. Yeah. Anyway, I, I did, uh, I did spend a lot of time <laughs> driving by Prospect Hill Park. But I do remember the show, but only sort of vaguely that we were outside and it was very nice. There were two really heavy duty. Uh, shows that were very strange and some seemed like people were doing drugs in the in the writing room one of them was f troop and the other was green acres and there were many times in those shows when nothing made any sense whatsoever and that was the best part of it um, but i can remember yeah green acres was great so those were all the <laughs> questions there were lots of comments about um how they thought you guys were awesome and there were different songs that people were really dancing quite a bit to and moving around and and just commenting about wonder how wonderful you are mm -hmm. and if we were in person we would give you one really big round of applause for the entertainment tonight it was well, thank you so much a personal concert it was so cool so thank oh, you thanks. so much well yeah in other oh, circumstances great. other times we would be giving a lot of big hugs to people and we're really looking forward to a time we can do that again 
it might be a little while. So uh, if you have someone to hug, hug them a lot. Yep. Yeah, I'll say. Absolutely. Hug well and often. Oh, because that's just, um, that's something that I really miss, just seeing people and being able to, to grab them, say hello, and occasionally get lifted off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> when you're five feet tall, that's just part of the, part of the course. Um, but we so appreciate you guys putting this together. It's been a really a, a landmark moment in, <laughs> at least in our personal uh, musical progress to to do this. I would love to turn around the camera and, and show you the room, but I'm not going to. But I posted a picture on Facebook of what it looks like. So you can see it on our Facebook page. Um, there's an amazing amount of wires and cords and right now very bright lights. Um, and we just wanted to do it this way. Uh, everybody is doing great, like streaming from home and get to see their house, and that's great. But we just, I don't know, somehow we just need. You don't it. want to see our home. No, <laughs> no. But um, we needed the, we needed to kind of get in the mood here, you know, with the with the staging and everything. We had fun setting it up. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to do that too. Awesome. I I, I also too want to add my thanks to the special events committee. Dan and Amy, she's not, she's our special guest on the special events committee. You guys worked really hard to help us get things together and Sonia and Scott and Maureen. So thank you guys so much. And I think the tech committee did a lot of work on this as well. Um, Dan with Maureen and Martha and Anna. Um, and a special thanks to Dan Berlin and the dance party on Zoom. That was awesome. That was fun to do. And we appreciate, we appreciate that you're, that you're doing that. Um, we really are, um, glad that you guys came tonight, that everybody was here. I saw that a couple of my items were bid, were, I've been outbid. So when this is over, I got to get back online and check out the auction. Maureen's <laughs> going to show us, uh, give us one last, one last look at it. But I want to remind you about making a donation and having it doubled by our um, anonymous donor. And, um, and really thank you guys all for such a great night. I'm going to um, turn it, turn it over to Maureen so she can uh, check out one last time, the screen share of the silent auction. So have a great night, everybody. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I hope everyone enjoyed that fun time of dancing along at the Zoom dance party. We really appreciate you joining us. I'm going to show us how we're doing on the silent auction. So hold on one second while I screen share. We had... We had some activity while we were away. There are still bottles of wine and gift cards to buy right now. $35 will get you a bottle of white wine or red wine with a $25 gift card. There are still plenty of raffle items available for purchase too. Raffle tickets for $5. We would appreciate any bit that you can give. We really, really appreciate it. There are still several items. I'll show you up here. There are still several items with no bids. So please, please, please consider bidding on some of these items. There's some beautiful photographs, um, photo sessions, some makeup bags, some earrings. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who doesn't love her? Um, again, the pair of shoes, if anyone calls, size eight, great bargain. So please consider any of the auction items that are here. Um, there's also all these other items that there's lots of Lots of items still for sale. That was my bids again, so I clicked the wrong button. There are still 92 items. I have been outbid like Nadine has been a couple of times. I might be bidding more. The auction is available until 6 p.m. Thanks so much. Enjoy the night. Thanks so much. On to Sonia. Yes, I think. All right, fantastic, awesome, 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 guys. So that was amazing music. Really enjoyed rocking out. My guy, my real guy, but my my pseudo guy, Hootie Owl, really enjoyed rocking out with us. It was so much fun. And Hootie encourages you to check out the auction as well as make a donation now. So I will be talking about how we have this wonderful sponsor who is going to be doubling all straight donations made to us through the auction website. Now this, this website's gonna close down soon, but the auction website at onlineauctions.waltfamlandtrust.org 
will be up until tomorrow at 6 p.m. And you can donate through the green donate button in the upper right corner. And all donations made that way will be matched by this very generous donor. So I wanna thank again, all of our amazing sponsors. And I believe at the end of the show, we're gonna actually have a nice um, graphic that'll thank all of the sponsors that have donated to the Waltham Land Trust, not only the businesses, but the individuals and the folks who made a little bit of a smaller donation, but we still really, really, really appreciate it nonetheless. Um, and we're so pleased that all of you guys joined us. I'm really psyched that uh, it all kind of worked out and the the dance party was wicked fun. Thanks to Dan Berlin for um, for hosting that and, and manning that. That was awesome. And uh, I'm just I'm just so pleased. I mean, we didn't know how this was gonna work out, and I think it was a success, right? Yep. Yay, everybody! Awesome. So we're really, really, really pleased that you all joined us. Again, the auction is open until 6 p.m. tomorrow. And that is also the time uh, when you, you can make donations up until that time and they'll be matched by this very generous donor. So thanks so much. And don't forget, you can also get food from Not Your Average Joe's any day this summer up until August 31st. Just order online or call them or go in person. They're now having seating inside and there's outdoor seating. And of course you can get the pickup, which we got and we had some food here and it was great. Um, the Land Trust is going to do a walk in August along the Mass Central Rail Trail to Not Your Average Joe's to have dinner together. If you'd like to join us, that'd be cool. We're looking at doing that on August 15th. And then on August 29th, which is another Saturday, we're going to have our second or I guess our first of this year guided fungi foray with our friends, uh, Larry Millman. He's going to come back and we're going to look for mushrooms at some undisclosed place on August 29th. So check the website, the walfamlandtrust.org website and sign up for my e-blasts if you don't get them already. And we look forward to seeing you in person sometime later this month or in the fall. And if we have to keep doing virtual events, we will. Thank you so much. Really, really thanks, thanks to everyone so much. And um, until next time, cheers. Done. Thank you guys. Ooh. Thank you, Annie and Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.